Hello students, this video lecture will cover section 12.2, chords and arcs. Our learning goal for this lesson will be able to use congruent chords, arcs, and central angles, and we'll be able to use perpendicular bisectors to chords. First, we need the definition of a chord. A chord is a segment whose endpoints are on a circle. So this brings us to our first theorem which states that within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent central angles cut off congruent arcs. So in this case we have angle AOB which is congruent to angle COD and that tells us that those two arcs, arc AB and CD, must also be congruent. The converse of this theorem is also true. It says that within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent arcs have congruent central angles. So if you have two arcs that are congruent, so if you have two arcs that are congruent, then their central angles must be exactly the same. So this brings us to our second theorem, which in many ways is very similar to the first. It states that within a circle, or in congruent circles, congruent central angles cut off congruent chords. And the converse of this is also true. So if we have congruent chords, then their central angles must be the same. Our third theorem relates congruent chords with congruent arcs. So if we're within the same circle or in congruent circles, congruent chords have congruent arcs. And the converse of this one is true as well. You probably noticed that all of these proofs are exercises in the textbook and we'll be working on those the next time we meet. So our first question asks us in diagram, circle O is congruent to circle P. Given that BC is congruent to segment DF, what can you conclude? So here we have segment BC, which is a chord of the circle, connects two endpoints that are on the circle, which is congruent to segment DF. Now, based on what we've looked at previously, we know that congruent chords have congruent central angles. So we know that angle BOC must be congruent to angle DPF. And the congruent chords also cut off congruent arcs. So we know that arc BC must be congruent to arc DF. Our fourth theorem, theorem 12.7 and its converse. Within a circle or in congruent circles, chords that are the same distance from the center must be congruent. So we can see here we have circle O, we have EO which is congruent to OF, and that tells us that chord AB and chord CD must be congruent. And the converse of this is also true. So if you draw A, B, and C, D such that they're the same length, then the perpendicular distance from E to O must be the same as the perpendicular distance from O to F. So let's take a look at the proof of this theorem. We have O to A, which is the same as O to B, which is the same as O to C, and O to D. The reason for this is because we're talking about radii of a circle. They're all radii of the exact same circle, so by definition they must be congruent. The second statement here, its reason is that it's the given information. Now, here we have OE, which is perpendicular to AB, and OF, which is perpendicular to CD. And then we're told that those are right angles, so that's by the definition of perpendicular segments. So here the reason is given to us, it's the hypotenuse leg theorem. So in this case, which two triangles are congruent? Let's triangle AEO and triangle CFO. So then we're told that angle A is congruent to angle C, and so that's corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now we're looking at the larger triangles, the triangles created by the radii and the chords. So here we have B is congruent to A and C is congruent to D, and that's the isosceles triangle theorem. 
And so by transitivity, B must be the same as D. Here we have two angles, A and B in one triangle, that match C and D in the other triangle. So their third angles must be congruent. That's the third angles theorem. And then since their central angles are the same, the chords must be congruent. So that completes the proof of theorem 12.7. So in this case, we're asked to find the value of x. First, we're going to start by finding the total value of that chord. So we have 18 plus 18, which is in fact 36. So the value of this chord is 36, and the value of this chord is 36. We have both right angles. So the value of x has to be 16 by the theorem that I just showed you. And so to justify our answer, we would say that congruent chords are the same distance from the center. So here we have three more related theorems, 12.8, 12.9, and 12.10. The first one states that in a circle, if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and its arc. So in this case, the right angle gives us two equal parts, CE and ED, and two equal arcs, CA and AD. 12.9 tells us that if a diameter bisects a chord, as long as that second chord is not a diameter itself, then it is perpendicular to the chord. And our final theorem, theorem 12.10, says that in a circle, the perpendicular bisector of a chord must go through the center of a circle. So let's go ahead and see if we can use this in an interesting way. We want to find the radius of a quarter. So in order for the radius to be found, we have to find the center of the circle. And so let's look at one of the ways to do that. So I'm going to start by creating two chords. So I'm going to draw one chord that starts there and goes to the opposite side. And I'm going to draw a second chord somewhere else in the circle that starts at another point and goes to the other side. Now, I know that the perpendicular bisector of these two segments must contain the center of the circle. So if I draw the first perpendicular bisector, I'll have a good idea of where the center could be. It'll exist somewhere in the circle on that line. So let's go ahead and draw the first one. So I'm going to take my compass. I'm going to draw two circles, both of which are more than half the length of the segment. So I get those two points right there. So I get this intersection, and I get this intersection, and I want to connect those with a line. Okay, and let's go ahead and draw the second set. So I'm going to start this perpendicular bisector process on both sides of this line. So I'm going to extend my compass a little bit, and I'm going to draw a circle from here. And I'm going to go to the opposite side of this chord, and I'm going to draw, draw the arc necessary to find those two intersection points. Now let's go ahead and connect those with a line as well. So I'm going to connect from this intersection point all the way across to the other one. Now, I know that this red line must contain the center of the circle, and I know that this green line must contain the center of the circle, so the only spot that could be the center of that circle is the intersection point of the two. So here we can actually figure out how accurate we were. If we place the compass on the hypothesized center of that circle and find one of the edges, we can figure out pretty accurately how close we were to having the actual radius of this quarter. And you can see we were off by just a little bit, but very, very close to perfect. So what is the radius of this circle? 
It's the distance from one end point to the center of the circle. So this is R. And so we're down to our last two questions of the day. Finding the value of each variable to the nearest tenth. Let's start with this question on the left. We're trying to find the radius of the circle. So we have a cord that's measured 14 centimeters in length from L to M. We have a perpendicular line from K to N. So I know that these two segments, LN, must be congruent to NM. So each one of those must be 7. Well now if I focus on triangle KLN, we have a right triangle that has two legs, one of 3 and one of 7. So I know that 3 squared plus 7 squared must equal R squared. In other words, 9 plus 49 has to equal R squared. So R squared equals 58. Here, unfortunately, we need to take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 58 is not a great number, so in this case, the value of R is, in fact, the square root of 58. And so to the nearest tenth, R is going to be approximately 7.6 centimeters. Now the second question tries to get a little trick involved here. We have the length from E to B, which is 15, but we need the length from A to B. Well here B is marked as the center of the circle. So the distance from E to B has to be the same as A to B because we know that all radii are the same in the circle. So that's also 15. Now this segment C to B meets a chord at its midpoint. So we have two parts of 11. Because of that, we know that this must be a right triangle. So in this case, we have y squared plus 11 squared, which has to equal 15 squared. So we have y squared plus 121 equals 225. So y squared equals 104. So y is going to have to equal the square root of 104 and rounded to the nearest tenth, y is going to be about 10.2 units. And that concludes this video lecture, section 12.2. Lots of theorems to write down, and I apologize for that. Make sure you have all those copied down everything you need for tomorrow, and I'll see you guys soon.